All right, we'll go ahead and get started with our uh, session on judges. And so this is one that we've hosted or had a session on uh, very fairly frequently in the past, not every year, but this is always one that uh, has a lot of good discussion and, and good experiences in different counties of how they secure judges. Uh, do they do contracts? How do they maintain that uh, connection to make sure that a judge doesn't forget uh, their time, as well as uh, pay and all the things that come with uh, uh, the whole judging dynamics. And so the way that we're going to work uh, the, the, the session is we've asked two uh, of our agents that are involved in this area to kind of give a examples of what their counties or uh, Baltimore and districts, maybe what different counties do within their district in some of the areas about securing judges, where do they find them? You know, do they use a contract? What do they pay? How, how all that gets put together? Or other comments they have just in terms of the livestock judges side. And so uh, for this, we have Abby Powell. Uh, Abby is in the Meridazine district, which is Miami and Lynn County. And then we also have Jenna Lee Gotze of the Twin Creeks District, which is the combination of four counties of Decatur, Norton, Sheridan, and Graham. And so uh, what we'll do is we'll have each uh, talk first before we get to questions. And then as you have questions, once each of them uh, cumulatively gets done with their comments, then we're going to open up for broader discussion and specific comments uh, for those two, as well as any other comments. And we'd love to have your experiences as well. Um, and that's why, but we just have it kicked off with two of our uh, agents now. So Abby, I uh, may ask you if you want to go ahead and, and start us off with some of your information of how you handle the livestock judges. Sure. Thanks, Joel. Um, I hire the judges for the Lynn County Fair, and we are kind of in a unique situation, and I'm sure there's others out there that are in the same situation, but I both have kids that participate in the livestock at the county fair, and so that puts us kind of in a awkward position, and yes, the rumor goes around that I hire the judge to win, and that's, if anybody, any of you know me, you know that I talk too much and I'm way too honest but to cheat and um I guess if I'm going to cheat I think my um so to kind of combat that was one of the first things that I looked at and so what I have done is I send a letter out to all of the superintendents letting them know of the situation and that we're reaching out for help in locating some judges and try to make it I am the one that's responsible for that and so I carry the weight of that on my shoulders which I have no problem doing um, but it does kind of make it um, at least give some transparency now that we've been doing this a little bit longer for Annie and I, I'm not as formal with the letter, but I do read, they're the ones that are out showing. They're going to the spring shows. Who have they used? Who they not, not enjoyed? Um, who's been horrible? Who's been great? Who's up and coming? And um, the other thing that I have done is I've reached out to people within the industry. Um, Joel's given me some names. Carla Nemechek's been great. Our FFA advisor at Prairie View, she gave me like 15 up and coming young beef judges in Missouri. And so that's kind of what I do there as far as um, how we go about hiring and where I get after 15 years of being an extension of kind of keeping track of those. Um, and in Lynn County, we do not hire the same judge two years in a row. We are one and done. Um, we have a very competitive hog show, and so we like to just have one come in and be done with, you know, have them come once and roll on. And I had somebody say once, if you're hiring a judge that nobody knows, maybe there's a reason nobody knows them. So don't be scared that somebody in your county is shown under them before or knows them, because if you have people that are competitive in, in your county, they're probably going to cross paths with people. Um, so that is how I go about hiring. We do not do a contract. Um, and I will say 
the money side of things, I do judge horse shows. And so I see what some people are paying and I'm willing to come and judge for a lot less just because I enjoy it. Support your agents in paying a judge. You will get a quality judge and your 4-H families will thank you. Um, I do not pay mileage. We do a flat fee. My fair secretary has the checks all ready to go. Nobody has to wait for a check. And my fair secretary loves that too. She gets them all done before a fair even starts. They're enveloped in the fair office and we don't have to mess with that. Um, so I, I will say that paying a judge is important. And I feel that that has helped me over the years to be able to hire somebody that I feel is a good quality judge. I've had some judges that, you know, our fairs the first week in August that have shown up in September that have judged at state fair. Um, those dollar amounts are not really behind me and what I choose to pay them. And especially, like I said, our hog show, if I pay them a little bit more, no one will question it. The only time I got questioned was when there was an error and somebody charged mileage from Dodge City and that shouldn't have happened, but that was not on my end. So, um, but that's where we're at, you know, kind of pay wise and um, how I go about getting those. So um, I think I'll stop with that because I can talk too much and I don't want to take up too much time. That's fine, Abby. And you were, you, uh, you were cutting out a little bit here and there, 95% oh, of it we got. When, when you talked on the fees, you talked about, you know, a flat fee, no mileage, you know, so it's, it's ready to go. Do you, can you give a range of what you would generally pay uh, I know it may vary, but uh, you said the hog judge maybe gets a little bit more. Uh, can you, are you comfortable stating what you normally pay? Goat show used to be combined and we would pay usually about 300. We've separated those out. The judges still have, I'm paying anywhere from 250 to 350 on judges with a flat rate. Um, I did have one that wanted 400 and a hotel room. And I felt that he was worthy of that. And I did check with the fair board president before I committed to the hotel room. And I put the hotel room on my extension credit card and then the fair board reimbursed that. So I'm usually between 250 and 400, somewhere in there. So, and not paying mileage really does help kind of keep that in check. And it gives me a wider pool, so to speak. So. Yep. Yep. Very good. Very and good. some may say that's not enough, but I think we've done okay. Yep. Very good. Uh, Jenna Lee, would you like to kind of give yours now? Sure. So um, we are maybe a little bit different, um, maybe a little bit lower out here on the northwest side, I should say, in the Twin Creeks district. Uh, so I, I only actually secure our judge in Graham County um, and that's might look a little bit different this year, but Patsy Maddie, our 4-H agent, uh, really kind of works with combination of our OPs and 4-H program assistants to get the judges in our other three counties. So her and I kind of visited and came up with some of the details on that to share. Um, and kind of like Abby said, I don't necessarily have kids showing in the county that I work in, which I'm thankful for that. And eventually my kids will be in a whole nother county. But my husband and I do raise show pigs up here and sell, you know, locally. And that could tends to be kind of something that you know hasn't been an issue yet, but you don't want it to become one either. Um, and so that's what I think Patsy Maddie might take on maybe that livestock judge role, um, securing that in Graham County, just so we don't have to worry about that being a problem here either. So um, with that being said, uh, we hold a meeting every January with all the agents in our district, and we kind of discuss, you know, who we've had in the past for every, and this is indoor judging and livestock and everything, um, kind of discuss who we've had, who we liked, who we didn't like. Um, we utilize the spreadsheet 
It's the Northwest Area Judge Spreadsheet that has been, I think, put together for years and needs quite a bit of updating, to be honest. And I think there's a lot of agents working to update those now. But um, we utilize that a little bit here and there if necessary. Kind of like Abby said, we try not to keep the same livestock judge for two years in a row. Um, we usually try to use them one year and then, you know, if we really liked them, we may come back to them four years or so down the road. Um, but we try to kind of make sure that we're sharing the love there a little bit. It gets a little bit different out in, or a little bit difficult out where we are just in terms of um, pretty much every one of our four county livestock shows has um, all four species. The judge, the same judge will judge all four species. And if you know much about livestock, you know that it's difficult to find somebody that is really efficient in all four species. Um, and especially in Northwest Kansas, you know, that's not you limit yourself to someone who can do that plus limit yourself to being local um, and that that gets to be a challenge sometimes so um, we do not do any contracts none of the four counties do in our district either um, so you know we're working on trying to find judges right now this time of year and usually by the first part of June or mid-June, we're trying to send out letters um, just as a reminder to those judges that we have secured. You know, here, just a reminder to let you know that you signed up to judge our show. Here are the details. This is where you need to be, what time we ask you to be there, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's kind of, I guess, our form of reminding. Um, I'm gonna go through my notes here. That's kind of how we work through securing. Um, all of our judges, like I said before, are paid for judging all four species in all of our counties. Um, one of the counties, I think, last year ended up finding two separate judges because they had some conflict in a family, conflict of interest, I guess, in one species. So they went ahead and found a second one. But we range from um, one county pays $400 plus mileage. And again, that's for all four species. One county is $10 per hour plus a state mileage rate. Um, and that's actually here in Graham County. And then our 4-H Livestock Committee comes in and actually pays an additional $200 on top of that um, just to kind of help add to it. Um, Norton County pays $125 plus mileage. And then I believe all four counties get a meal voucher included in that as well. And then Another one of our counties is $200 plus mileage. So I guess anywhere from two to $300 and upwards of 400 is what ours are looking at out in our district. Um, I think that's really all. We have kind of a mixture of, you know, if, if a judge is needing a hotel room or lodging, how that's taken care of. In some of our counties, it's paid for by the fair board. Um, in some counties, it just kind of depends, you know, in Graham, that doesn't happen very often. We don't typically get asked that. I think it came up at the very last minute last year with our judge. And so the 4-H Livestock Committee paid that, but um, that was kind of a last minute call and just make it happen. So um, I think, is that everything that you were looking yeah. for, Joel? No, that was, that's excellent. Excellent. So maybe just a question uh, back to you then is, your judge race, like you said, you know, especially find somebody with four species that they could judge or then obviously between the other three counties, you're looking at about 12 different judges between four species, three counties. Yeah. How big an area do you, do you, you know, with the mileage side too, but also have somebody, you know, maybe a, at a little bit of an arm's length. How, where, where's your radius that you normally pull from? And I know there's a lot of variation, but average wise. Um. So, oh shoot, I'm not 100% sure. You know, I'm, I'm new to Kansas, so I'm trying to learn. Yeah, understood. Here. Um, I think a few years ago, we had somebody from uh, Scott County actually come up and judge. So I want to say I try to think more in terms of drive time, and I try to stay two hours and under, which mm -hmm. can be kind of tough. Like I said, yeah. back judging four species and 
feeling comfortable to judge all four species. I mean, we don't have large sheep and goat numbers in most of our counties, but um, it sure. just. Yeah, and, and you probably, like Abby talked about some of the Missouri, because we're they're located. Do you pull out of Nebraska then as well, uh, I assume, to some degree? Yeah, I do believe so, yeah. Yeah, okay, very good. All right, maybe uh, we'll open it up. I know there's been a One little bit. One thing I want to touch on. Yep. I was just going to say, Joel, on this, the number side, I think Jenna Lee's point of their sheep and goats are small. Um, in Lynn County, we are very, we're, we're small, but we have a pretty strong 4-H program. And I don't have the numbers here in front of me, but we showed right at 80 head of lambs and 120 goats and right at 90 hogs last year. So we've got three pretty big shows between breeding and market. So that's the other thing for us to do four shows. Ours are in the evening. They start at six o'clock at night over four nights. So to keep somebody four nights in a row is justifiable for us so. yeah 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 it really depends on your show schedule and that that certainly plays in I mean I've been in, uh, you know I've been fortunate to judge a lot of different counties in, in Kansas and you know there's some that we knock through all four species over a day and a half period or um, you know our Pottawatomie County I know I said Alvin you're on I mean we we have our shows scattered over basically three days. And so, um, yeah, it just really depends on how you match that up and how you can get, you know, people comfortable with different species or, yeah, it depends on the situation for sure. Anyone else uh, have specific comments or certainly I know there's some others on here from, from a variety of other counties that may have uh, uh, be interested to see. Uh, and I bring up the contract side. And again, sometimes that, that may seem really formal. Maybe even there, it's just maintaining, make sure everybody has the contact information. I've We've been on both sides of the panic of uh, judges and showing up and it's five minutes to the show. And how do we get a hold of them? And who has that number, right? Um, I guess uh, any any comments relative to that, how all that contact information. I mean, there's securing the judge this time of year. Maybe comments from anybody in terms of how you follow up with that judge to make sure that they're well aware of their time commitment. Text messaging. Yeah, texting. I would I would agree with that too. So usually when I secure a judge um, in the early part of the year, I'm asking them, are you okay with text messaging? Can I, you know, chat back and forth with you when we get close to time? But I think that the letter that we send out, I also ask them, do you prefer that emailed or, you know, postal service mailed? And um, so that whatever works best for them, if they can pull it up on their phone and email with all the details, that's one way that works for us well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, uh, finding judges, again, you two have talked about it a little bit. Anybody else on the call here um, on our message? I know we have several other counties present. Maybe any comments of how you're finding judges and are you finding that more difficult or the same over the last several years to find judges that you feel are qualified to participate in your shows? Kim from Post Rock District and um, in Osborne County, we we contact um, some of the community college livestock coaches like Hutch. Um, we've also, I know um, Sandra in Smith County um, has contacted the K-State judging livestock judging coach to get names of um, any of those livestock uh, judging team members that 
um, are interested in coaching. So we have used a lot of those um, people before. Um, I know, you know, there are other counties that they're like, um, they focus more on adults, but um, I guess that's, that's one option um, are those livestock judging team members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and over time, of course, I, being here in Manhattan, uh, you know, I, I give a lot of recommendations for some of those or some graduate students that have had good experience on judging teams and particularly several out of state students, you know, um, it's kind of that double edged sword that we run into, I guess, when people ask us too, because we want to make sure that we're sending somebody that is obviously qualified and would do a great job because, uh, you know, there's a lot of work and effort goes into these projects. And at the same time, it's kind of a way sometimes it's some of the first shows that they'll judge is county fairs. And so again, it's, I think that's the responsibility of everybody on this call, as well as myself. I mean, I, I, I'm very passionate about making sure that your judge understands the implications of their placings and how to place at your fair. I would love to say that you're all the same, but you're not, okay? So I know when I come to a fair, I am very clear with the superintendent, the county agent, what is your ribbon system? And what is the implications of certain ribbon colors? Or how do you set up, you know, I'll even get into asking on the premium sales side, because what you'll run into is, if, if you're from a state or we have a student, a, a judging member from any junior college or K-State or a grad student or from even Oklahoma State or if you pull out of Nebraska, they may not understand. They could say, yeah, we give blues, reds, whites, or some of you give purples, blues, but some don't do purples. You're all different, okay? And having them understand the implications because a lot of counties – if you get a white ribbon, that animal is not eligible for the premium sale. But in some cases, it is, okay? I think you need to make sure you set that up because in some places, it may be common to do whites. I know unless they're dragging a leg and they're uh, about ready to die five minutes later, I will not give a white ribbon. But if they deserve it, they're going to get it. But I also know, let's, you know, that's me unless it's absolutely something it has to. But Again, understanding that because each judge, if they're not from Kansas and understand our general system, they don't know. So it's really up to the agents and the superintendents to help set that up. Not that you're telling what the judge to do, but also they may just not knowing do things that makes everybody mad and then they're a bad judge and they're necessarily maybe weren't a bad judge. They just didn't understand how your general placing system historically has been or to make you know to make it a good experience so I would say that for anybody on this call that's one of my main things that I, I stress especially with any younger judges or anybody from out of state you have to explain that to them because each county is even a little different and I don't know if there's been examples that you guys have run into to make comments on that but I you got to help the judge be successful um, and, and that's part of them understanding what's, what the expectation is. And also, I would say some judges come in and remember, it's your show. You're hiring the judge. It's not the judge's show. So you have that ability to dictate as well as if they're taking way too dang long, tell them you got to speed up. All right. Or if they're you have that authority, right, you're paying them as a judge. And so I. Uh, I'm very feel very strongly that you can intervene and hey you're going too slow these things um, and if they get mad so be it right it's not their show it's your show. So to add to that you said a couple of things that spurred my memory. I said that we send a letter out a few weeks to a month before our show and we always mail or email them a copy of whatever section of the fair book that they need with that and which also shows kind of our ribbon system I guess or what they how we which range we go with um, just so that they can have a little bit of I guess knowledge ahead of time whether or not they actually read that before who knows it may depend on the judge but they get it 
And then we ask them to be there, you know, 20 minutes or so before the show starts so that myself and um, one of our livestock superintendents or multiple can kind of discuss those kinds of things with them. Um, this, these, this is our ribbon system that we use. This is how an animal is able to get into the premium auction, things of that nature so that they're aware. Yeah, that's really good because especially when it comes to breeds, you know, again, it's generally, you know, some, some counties, they require pay, you know, registration papers for certain breeds, but not others. You know, of course, you know, sheep, it's, you know, that gets very tough to classify, but yet we have breeds. Pigs is the same way. And, and the only real place you run in there is hampshires that are crossbreds, but if it's classification, that's fine. But also you got to realize that if you run a spotted, a spot pig in the ring, that's red and black spots, okay? You put that judge in a really, really tough position. I would contend it's never the judge's job to classify your county fair. Um, it's just like when Alvin, who's on here, and I, when the pigs come through and we tag we're co-superintendents at Pop County, it's our job to make sure that whatever's gonna go in that ring represents those breeds. And you cannot put a judge in a position that they now have the pig that's clearly not, or a sheep, or you have skurs on an Angus steer, and if you're not supposed, you know, whatever it is, um, you got to take care of that as, as superintendents and fair board agents to not put a judge in that position, because it's not their job to classify once they walk in the ring. And, and that's e that can easily happen, but also we got to do what we can to prevent those situations, because that just creates the firestorm of makes people mad, and it isn't necessarily the judge's fault. It's something that happens. So we got to, my view, just make sure we set, the, again, back to setting the judge up for success to uh, evaluate the animals that come in the ring, regardless of species. Ross, any wise comments from the Meadowlark District? No, I, I think good information. Um, one thing that, that maybe I would throw out that we've tried that I think works is um, at different times, bring superintendents together. We'll take the judges lists um, and kind of have as a, a superintendent group, have them rank, you know, what, what are uh, five judges that you'd have us contact? And then, uh, you know, our program managers reach out to those individuals. So another set of eyes kind of making recommendations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess the other thing I would throw out too is, you know, I'm not against uh, college kids judging or, or academia or, or, or that kind of thing, but I do like to mix in or at least suggest that we, we bring a producer perspective as well. So, uh, you know, um, every once in a while we'll try to get, get somebody that's actually in production agriculture that, that might have a, a different twist than, than the mm -hmm. show ring as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Now we got a couple minutes. The one left. thing I'll, yeah. the thing I would say about judges, and I judge a lot of horse shows in a lot of states. I've done state horse shows, all kinds of stuff. For me, as an agent, hiring judges is my least favorite thing to do. I would rather do a budget than I would hire judges. I procrastinate it because it is a big responsibility as an agent because I am hiring the person that is going to evaluate everything, including my own children. And so there's a lot of pressure with that because I want to hire someone good and I keep raising the bar. And then when I get people that complain, because I always say, if you ever don't come to me, I can't help you fix it. So when I hear complaints about judges, I say, but look how far we've come. I could go back to, you know, hiring the local from the county that we used to 15 years ago. We've came a long way and you, I've, I keep raising the expectations. I keep raising the bar, which puts even more pressure on me. So I think as those of you that are on here as fair board members, please realize that this is a, this is a big, one of the biggest responsibilities that an agent has for county fair time is hiring the judges because yeah. It doesn't bother me when people call me. 
So I don't know why people burdened when I call them, but they do. So know that this this is a challenge for us as agents and if somebody out there that really likes it a lot you can come to Lynn County and hire for me because I don't it's yucky yeah it, the other side too is um I know there's well I had feedback and I know that there's a judge from outside of Kansas that starts calling to want to judge and I, I've heard from several breeders this person's a complete disaster okay and so you got to be it careful if you get a judge trying to call again maybe that's you know again doing your homework making sure that everything is um, going to be laid out and, and you have somebody that's going to be successful so yep okay looks like we got about 20 seconds left the last thing I would say too is as you look at compensation I know Chris Mullenix had calls you know, um, you know, this year, you know, just look at, um, you know, you got to do it. It gets really expensive. Mileage is going to be higher this year. If you pay mileage, you got to be prepared for that. 